Welcome to Making with Mark. In this video, we'll build the Jawa Sandcrawler from Star Wars. Let's get started. I used cardboard and a hot glue gun to make the main body of the Jawa Sandcrawler. From here, we'll add lots of details. The model is completely scratch built, so I took some artistic liberties and made it how I wanted it. The first order of business is to round off some of those rough edges, especially the hot glue where I put the model together. To do this, I'll use my rotary tool. With the edges now rounded off, it's time to do some extra edge treatment. And to do that, I'm gonna use some computer printer paper and cut it into strips, fold it over, and then glue it on the edges. This will give me a really nice, crisp edge. I mark each piece of paper and then cut it to length. Next, using regular white glue or school glue, I add some beads to each side of the cardboard edge and then add the paper. This gives me a nice crisp edge. Next, I work my way all the way around the model doing this same edge treatment. This will really make it a lot easier to finish the model in the next step when I do the gluing. And then later on when I do sanding and building up those edges, it's really going to make a big difference. It's a huge time saver and it'll make the model look a whole lot better. With most of the edges now complete, I turned my attention to the back of the sand crawler. Originally, when I constructed this main body, I left it all closed in. There's going to be some very important uh, engine details here on the back that I want to add. And to do that, I need to cut out an opening. With the lines carefully marked out, I use my razor knife and go ahead and remove the excess material. Before I can add the details to the engine compartment, I need to install a back plate so you can't see all the way into the inside of the vehicle. To do that, I'm actually going to use the piece that I cut out and trace around it and then cut a slightly smaller piece based off of those dimensions. Before I install the back plate, I need to install a few other little support pieces. With everything in place, I seal it all together with some hot glue. Next, I clean up those rough edges just like I did before with the sheets of paper and white glue. And now it's on to building the tracks for the sand crawler. To do this, I used more cardboard. I cut out the basic shape of what I'm going to call the truck system that holds the tracks. And I ended up building eight of those. I'm going to be four pairs of two. And then I do the same edge treatment as before. To build out each individual set of tracks, I cut out the similar shaped pieces as the truck system. 
And the idea here is that I'll glue these in between two different pieces of track. And then this part will actually attach to the underside of the sand crawler body itself. After doing some edge treatment to these spacer pieces, I go ahead and glue them in place. I repeated these same steps to build out all the remaining track systems. With the sand crawler body and track systems mostly complete, I decided to go ahead and add a coat of epoxy resin. This is a two-part epoxy. Uh, you do same parts A and B. You've got the resin and then the hardener. Once these are completely mixed, go ahead and brush on a coat over the entire surface of the model and I do the same thing for the tracks. Then I set these aside to dry for about 24 hours. Once the resin is fully cured, it's time to knock out some of those rough edges. And to do that, I'm going back to my trusty rotary tool with a sanding wheel. With the edges cleaned up, now it's time to go back and do a little bit more finesse work. So I took some sandpaper and sanded some of those edges by hand, just making sure things were nice and smooth before the next step. With the sanding completed, now it's time to add a layer of spackling to the model. And I decided to work in sections, just one section at a time. And the reason for that is to make sure that I can control the way the edges look and just to make sure I don't have a big blob of spackling to have to sand off later. Once the spackle dried, I started sanding each piece one at a time. Then it's on to another area to restart the whole process. So more spackle followed by sanding and so on. Now with most of the spackling and sanding done to the body, it's time to pay attention to a few details. I started off by adding these metal washers to the tracks, and I thought this looked really cool and sort of just creates just enough detail to sort of mimic some of the reference photos that I had looked at, and in the end I was actually really happy with the way these turned out. I had an old roll of this rubberized aluminum weather stripping. This is usually made to go around windows and doors in your home. In this case, I thought it would work pretty good to make some track systems out of. 
and especially the pad that I'm then going to add the track pieces onto. In the reference photos, this track sort of extends past the uh, truck system and gives kind of a little lip effect. And I thought this would work out pretty good in the end. I was pretty pleased with it. I'll definitely keep this in mind and plan on using it on other builds in the future. As you can see that goes on pretty easily because the back peels off and you can stick it in place. It actually stays put. So I just work my way around the model, stick this on. and then trim the ends to fit when I'm finished. To make the individual tread for the tracks, I used some sheet styrene and cut them into narrow strips that were just about the same size as that rubberized piece that I just added to the truck. With all the tracks added, I covered them in a layer of the white glue, and this is just to tie them all together and make them stay in place. Next, it's back to adding a few details. With a coat of primer, the magic begins. You can really start to see what the end result is going to look like. The primer just does a great job of unifying everything and making it into one piece. And it starts to become real easy to see the final outcome. Now I've got to turn my attention to this engine bay. I want to add a good bit more detail, just kind of based off the reference photos. And I'm not trying to follow those exact, you know, exactly the way they are. Uh, but I do want to add some detail to catch the eye and to somewhat resemble uh, what the actual model would have been like. So to do that, I'm adding in these cross pieces. Again, these are cardboard, kind of follow very similar steps that I did to build the actual body of the sand crawler. I'm going to make the pieces, then add some white glue, and then more of those paper strips just to do that edge detailing. Once I'm ready with those, I'll glue them in place with hot glue. To start building the detail for the two engines in the back of the sand crawler, I actually had these lids left over from one of the plug-in you know, electrical air fresheners. Uh, I thought the lids were cool when I first saw them and I've been saving them for something neat like this. So basically just mark those to be the correct length that I wanted them and then using my cutting wheel on the Dremel, cut those to size, then added some hot glue and that secured them right in place. So I put them side by side on this top bridge piece in the back. To build out the lower part of the engine, I had this small bottle that I thought would work pretty well if I cut it in half and then used it for each side of the engine that's sticking out. So again with the cutting wheel, I went ahead and sliced this little bottle in half. I even cut the lid and you'll see why in a moment. And it ended up working really well. I was happy with the final result. You wouldn't really tell that it's the bottle that it started with. I used this plastic cap that I had from my scrap bins. Did the same thing. I just cut it straight down the middle. Careful not to cut my fingers there. And once I had the little bits and pieces, the burrs off of the edge, 
went ahead and glued those together using some hot glue. And using more hot glue, I attached a top piece to each lower piece. time to add some hot glue and pop it in place. Back to my junk bins. I had a couple of these little rubber pieces. I actually used these uh, recently on another project. If you remember watching the spaceship, that was part of the landing gear. They came in handy on this one as well. I'll finish those in a moment. I also used a dry erase marker, cut it in half, remove the burrs. And this just adds, you know, these couple things combined to add additional details to these engines on the back of the sand crawler. It really gives your eye something to sort of look at. And I thought they painted up really well. I was just really happy the way the rust um, color looked on those. So applied some hot glue to both of those pieces, put those in place. Then I turned my attention back to those little rubber pieces I mentioned a moment ago. So I used some scrap wire that I had laying around. I bent those into some faux pipes and I really just sort of made this whole part up. I was really trying to add some detail, some complexity to these engines and try to mimic something that would look lifelike. And so I added pieces to the, the upper and lower parts. And then before adding too many more details, I used some spackle to fill in some cracks and just wiped away the excess. And then it's back to a few more of these little wire details. Now I wanted to make these rubber pieces look like almost like manifolds on a motor. And so you can see uh, that added quite a bit of detail to the lower engine. And now it's on to the main body of the sand crawler. And I want to focus on some different panel effects. Um, these are door looking pieces that are on the side of the uh, body of the sand crawler itself. So I cut each of those out, used a good bit of sheet styrene for these, uh, sanded the edges, and then glued each of those in place. made my way on down the side of the model and then worked my way around the front and then the lower back before moving on to the other side. Although it took quite a while to do all of this faux armor plating, the end result is really, really cool and it was well worth the time invested. Once I finished with all that plating, I covered it in a coating of primer and then I sprayed on a couple of good coats of this Rust-Oleum textured rust paint. From there, I moved on to doing some additional details. First with the tracks, I added a darker color of paint to sort of cause the track pieces to stand out a little bit. And this is a normal process that I do with weathering where I brush on and then dab off some of the excess. Then I turn my attention to the main body of the vehicle and I want to accent some of the panel lines so you can imagine those would be dirty and grungy so I'm just highlighting some random uh, panel lines there. I go back and add some additional color to those tracks. I thought they needed to be a little more grungy. So more of that weathering technique. Then 
going to move on to adding in some simulated corrosion with some white paint that I just dabbed on. And I used a sponge and some orange acrylic paint just to add even more weathering and distressing. Overall, I was very happy with the way this project turned out. It was a lot of fun and definitely a challenge.